Good afternoon. It is a very sunny day in Geneva, but we have gathered in the shadows of human rights abuses. We are here to summon wisdom and courage and to remind the entire world once again that each one of us has an opportunity to act in the way worthy of the best of our humanity. June 4th this year will mark the 30th anniversary of the Tiananmen Massacre. The photograph of the tank man, do you have a photo? Taken during the massacre is one of the most famous images of the 20th century. I think you all know the photo of the tank man. And, but who was the tank man? For nearly 30 years, people have wondered what became of him. But his fate, his identity, are still a mystery. This mystery lingers because the Chinese government has made every effort to suppress the truth about Tiananmen. To this day, in China, people who dare to remember still face brutal persecution. I was a student protester in Tiananmen Square in 1989. On the midnight of June 3rd, a friend and I arrived in Tiananmen Square when the massacre began. At one point, my friend and I were so close to soldiers that we could shout up to them in their trucks and tell them not to shoot. We told them they had no idea what's going on here, and we tried to touch their hearts by singing the songs that every Chinese would know. But when they received the order, they just opened fire. I witnessed many people killed, including 11 students who were chased and run over by tanks on the morning of June 4th. The tank man photo was taken the next day on June 5th, while the massacre was still going on. By any measure, this picture is an image of heroism, but how many heroes do we see in the photo? Nine years after the picture was taken, the writer Picolaya said, the heroes of the tank picture are two. The unknown figure who risked his life by standing in front of a juggernaut and the driver who rose to the moral challenge by refusing to mow down his compatriot. Not only did the second tank man, the driver, refuse to kill, he undoubtedly disobeyed orders and risked and perhaps received a punishment in the service of a countryman's life. Victimized by the same regime, these two heroic tank men remind us that those who stand opposite us are not necessarily our enemies. Common sense, conscience, and humanity can prevail, even under brutal circumstances. In June of 1989, the street of Beijing witnessed the many Chinese like the tank man standing face to face with soldiers who were killing. And on those streets, there were also some soldiers like the second tank man who opposed the orders to kill. Remembering this, I'm convinced the desires for dignity and freedom are indeed universal. Although the Chinese Communist regime 
has become increasingly unwilling to reform. Although the China's leader, Xi Jinping, has recently assumed the role of president for life, and although China under Xi Jinping has become a fascist state with, China's, with Chinese characteristics, the future of China must be toward freedom and democracy. We will defeat the fascism with Chinese characteristics. Now I turn to moderate this uh, uh, panel. The panel is supporting political prisoners. Uh, on the hallway, there's a wall. There are a lot of photos of prisoners' conscience. 60 photo, uh, 36 photos. After 60, uh, 36 photos, 18 are prisoners of China. Wang Bingzhang, Gao Zhisheng, Iliham Tokti, many, many, many others. So the work to support prisoners of conscience is very important. I can testify to the importance based on my personal experience. You know, when I was detained in solitary confinement, when I was um, blindfolded from one prison to another, when my mental condition deteriorated beneath endless isolation, repeated uh, uh, interrogations and ongoing psychological and uh, uh, physical torture, I could not but help thinking the worst. My friends have already forgotten about me. My, f my, f my family members have already abandoned me. All these things, and I almost collapsed until one day, a lawyer came to visit me, first visit. That visit actually became possible only with the pressure from international community. From that visit, I learned there was outpouring support from the international community. From that moment, I knew I was not alone. I have so many people like you are behind me. And from that moment, actually that visit ended the solitary confinement. And from that moment, I could stand up to defend my rights, even in, uh, in my cell, and defend the rights of others, other inmates. So the voice here, the work we do to support prisoners of conscience is very important. Today, we will hear three speakers. Um, either you know, uh, former political prisoners or prisoners' uh, uh, families uh, speak about uh, the imprisonment. And first speaker is Mr. Wen Wan Dai. He is a pro-democracy activist and the co-founder of the Vietnam Human Rights Com Committee. He has provided legal assistance to government critics and members of religious minorities. Since 2007, Wen Van Dai has been arrested multiple times and faced a lengthy prison sentence. In 2018, Mr. Wen was finally released from prison and exile. Now he resides in uh, Germany. And our second speaker, is Mr. Vincent de Lima. He is a brother of detained Philippine Senator Leila de Lima, a prominent voice for human rights in Philippines. Since 2017, he, she has been arbitrarily detained due to her strong opposition to President Duterte's drug war. Our third speaker is Mr. Richard uh, Reck. Cliff. Mr. Uh, Radcliffe is a husband of uh, Nazini Zachary Radcliffe, a British Iranian uh, charity worker who has been arbitrarily detained for three years. The UK government recently invoked diplomatic protection for his wife, 
The first time this has been done by UK for an individual in over 100 years. Richard also works with the families of other dual national, nationals arbitrary detained in Iran to build pressure for their release. Now we will hear one after another our wonderful speakers. First, I invite Mr. Wen Wan Day to the stadium. Thank you. Thank you.